So I've been looking forward to talking to this lady in an interview scenario for a long, long time. We've known her, and I'm sure many of you will know her through her various blogs and the amazing amount of promotional work she's done voluntarily most of the time over the years in Sligo. The magnum lady herself, Val Robus. Val, you're very welcome to the show. I'm really looking forward to having a good chat with you. Thanks, How are you Brendan. keeping? I'm good, thanks. Good, and welcome to the set. You were admiring our set. I was I laughing. It. It's really nice. Yeah, they've well, done that's, a great job. That's Brian behind the camera now does all that magic well, work. Well done, you know, Brian. So <laughs> great work. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a blow-in. You're a blow-in. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, I got to know you. I don't know how many years ago exactly? It feels like it's seven or eight years ago, maybe, when you were starting your photography, really? Was that where I would have first um, come across Well, you? I've been taking photos for a long time, yeah. but probably, I suppose I was probably in the limelight a bit more. Uh, I took a photo in 2013 of mm. the snow in Glenif Horseshoe, yes, and it kind of went photo. a bit viral. So, From uh, there, yeah. yeah. So, so as a blow-in then, uh, well, where, did, where did you blow in from, or what okay. was the backstory, or you were growing up? Or, you know, um, well, about. my parents are, were Irish. Uh, okay. They were both born and bred in Galway, and then they moved to England in the 1950s, and uh, so I was born in England. Uh, and then they retired, uh, they didn't want to retire to Galway, but they retired to Sligo. And myself and my husband, Andy, came for a week, took one look at the place and went, we need to move here. And what and year was that this was now? That, that, that was, we, we visited in 1990 and we moved in 1991. Oh, wow. So yeah. Sligo had that much of an impact. Yes, Up totally. Sticks, that's uh, nice. Just, uh, yeah, like uh, in England, it was kind of like a rat race. Um, yeah. There wasn't much time to enjoy life, I suppose, mm. and we were quite newly married. And uh, mm. it was just like if we decided if we were going to have a family, where better to bring them up than Sligo? Oh, very true. Yeah, I mean, it is it is quite a place. And again, I said I'm here a yeah. while too, but I never, I suppose I never take for granted what a lovely space it is. Totally. Here, so yeah. It only took you a week to find that. Well, love. It just took one look. At, I, I'll never forget it. Driving towards Ben Bolburn and like, wow, like the, just the atmosphere yeah, and yeah. just. And even now, every time I drive into town, I'm still blown away by the place. Yeah, the scenes, you know? the mountains as you drive in, I think yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, like, it's, it's unbelievable. And when you were in England, were you ever in the kind of photography, bloggy world? Was, um, it, was it just more kind of Well, regular? my dad uh, was a photographer. Ah. Both parents used to work for Kodak, and my dad used to work for the Harrow um, Museum, Kodak Harrow Museum. Okay. So um, I suppose photography was in the blood a bit. Uh, but he did weddings and I don't... You don't fancy I doing know, them? No, yeah. I think that is quite a pressurised job. Totally. I, I always feel sorry for the photographers at a wedding. It must, yeah. be, it must be high intense yeah. work. So anyways, as you said, your photography is where I would have first came across you. And then obviously the Magnum Lady blog. Now firstly, what is Magnum Lady? Or how did that... Oh, is this something to do with an ice cream? Or? No, <laughs> no. And, and I wish I could change the name now because it, it was kind of cool back in the day. It's a rock band, basically. Oh, so right. there's a band um, from Birmingham in England called Magnum, and I was a bit of a groupie when I was a, a young one. <laughs> and uh, it was my first email address, basically, magnumlady at aircom.net, which is gone now anyway. But um, so I started it, yeah. Uh, and, and now it's just too late to change it. I don't it. think anyone finds like, it cringy. Oh, maybe no, you, you, I do. You're your own I worst do. enemy. You're yeah. worried or about it, maybe. People think it's the ice cream or the champagne or Magnum PI. Right. Well, you never, there is opportunities for sponsorship maybe there anyway. You, you never know. know. You and there's also Magnum photos, which I actually didn't think about at the time. Right, okay. Pretty cool. Cool. So people could be Googling an ice cream and find you. So it's a handy, it's yeah, a good name of that yeah. regard. Yeah, well, yeah. But anyway, it's <laughs> so too late. So when did you start the blog like what was the first blog or what kind of what kind of made you go I'm going to blog about something I started the blog in 2009 uh, basically there was a lot of illness in the family mm. and um, I just started typing and okay. I just started putting it on a blog I didn't really think anything about it um, I don't know why I put it online but I did and uh, it kind of someone left me a comment and I was like oh people are reading this and uh, since then, I get around about 100,000 views a year wow. um, and probably more. So I just kind of kept it up. Right, okay. um, it started, as I say, like a diary kind of. So, and, and so you're saying with, with ill health in the family? Yeah, so did you find it maybe a bit of a release, even totally, writing, even if you didn't care who read it? it totally was, that. Yeah. I found the minute it was out of my head onto out in the ether, I suppose, that it was gone from laying on me. And, mm. and it's still the same now. Like, it's just... Um, I find if I've something going on in my head, especially we'll talk probably later about the mental yeah, health, yeah. but I just find if it's out there, it's gone from here. Yeah, and I, I read that a lot of people saying just sometimes just write down, even if you're yeah. afraid to share them sometimes. sometimes totally. Writing yeah. them down, it, totally. it just means it's out of here on something tangible maybe, totally. and that can help. So that, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, and it helps you process as well, well, yeah. me anyway. So, okay. yeah. so obviously you started as more of a personal blog. Yes. And I assume at some point, though, at some point along the journey, you must have just 
did a blog about some little journey you made, I presume, in Sligo, was it? Or was that one of your yeah, first journey blogs? Yeah, it just started blogs? writing about Sligo, really, because so many people don't know about the place. And yeah. I'm like, how can you not know? Like, And then Westlife became famous. So it was mm. kind of, oh, that's where Westlife are from. Okay. But there's so much more to Sligo than that. And I suppose I want to share my passion for the place because yeah. that's what it is. Like... The, the wow factor is here. Yeah. Like we have the best of everything, like beaches and lakes and forests and mountains. Why would you want to be anywhere else? Yeah, so, no, I mean, I've know. said this, I've actually said this on the show to a number of guests. It was the best two kilometer limit lockdown place to be. Totally. Even, even in the town, like, yes. you were always near a, you know, okay, maybe you might never enter to a beach, but a, a forest, a, la a lake, river, you know, it was, it was class to have like that. And then, as you said, that's the outer world. Yes. I think we we're in a winner with the cafe culture, the lovely pub night scene, the music scene, the theatre scene, yes. you know, the sporting scene. Like even in Saigo, I mean, as you said, you have so many different big sports teams. So whatever your fancy is, there's something there for there everyone. Is, like, there is, there you know. is something for everyone. It's just a fantastic place to live. But apart from the obvious things that we've just mentioned, your blog, I, you know, in the different jobs I've worked in, I've often said to someone, oh, you're coming on holidays here or coming for a weekend, just read this blog. Like even there's blogs for a rainy day. Yes. Like you have so much information there of just kind of, random little things that I'd say if someone was bored in Sligo and didn't know what to do, hit your website, Magnum Lady, and it's just full of those things. And do you enjoy that, finding a quirky little crafty thing yeah. maybe or a trail? I love it. Um, and it's the, there is, as I say, so much out there that people maybe don't know about. The bigger mm. places seem to get a lot of exposure, but there's so many hidden gems. And if you yeah. just have a look, and I suppose when my kids were growing up, I was always looking for things for, to do for the kids. And so that's always on my mind. And yeah. just for all different ages. And I find... Sometimes maybe you put people in a box of what they should like yeah. or, you know, I remember going to a, um, a conference once and at my age I was told I'd probably be knitting in a hotel <laughs> uh, uh, uh. and I was like, no. So I actually, I, a few years ago I did, um, I called my, myself the middle-aged adventurer and I went oh. off and I did random things. So I remember I went down to Belmullet in Mayo mm. and I did co-steering and you can do that in yes, Sligo. That's right, so actually. you jump off the cliff into the sea uh, and the worst bit was getting the wetsuit on. I thumped myself in the face, but anyway. <laughs> so you jumped off cliffs in, near rocks, but yes. yet the biggest injury was a thump in the face. Yes, it was with the wetsuit. <laughs> and then like you can go snorkeling in Mullock Moor, mm. and it's like being in an aquarium. There's wow. just so much so to, to do. do. Yeah, and I think, you know, sometimes you go, a oh, boring Saturday, boring Sunday. It's like, no, on your doorstep. But I, I mean, I wouldn't even know all the things. So I keep going back, like, your yeah. site really does have... Oh, and like, in fairness, it's not something that you're like, oh, go to my blog because I'm getting paid. No. You actually have a passion, and I mean... From the very beginning and right through to now, a lot of it is just you just do it as a voluntary thing. It's really all voluntary. I mean, yeah. um, over the weekend there, I went to the new uh, cafe, Doc 84, oh, yes. um, just to see what it was like. And I wrote a blog and there's 3,000 hits on it already. Yeah, yeah. Again, not not paid for. I paid for my food. You know, it's yeah, just yeah. to tell people what's happening. No, and again, I think some people get suspicious sometimes. Oh, totally. It's like, why are they doing that? Totally. They must be getting paid. No, no. Yeah, I think yeah. when it's a passion project. Yeah. You know, and that's what it is. It's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a passion. And I, I want people to see Sligo the way I see it. Yeah, and it's a nice, can, a normal person just journeying through the town. And totally, like, just yeah. to see the inside of the cafe or a new hotel or whatever it is yes. or a concert and that. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like, and so, as I said, you obviously have this massive love for Sligo since the first week you came. Totally, and you're, you're yeah. pushing that through for years and years and years. And I, as I said, I've always said it, I think you should have been paid by some kind of <laughs> tourism board or council or something because it was a huge asset to have. No more than we had John the Map here on the show before. Oh, he's brilliant too. Yeah, yeah like two, two huge assets, people yes. just doing it as a passion. And I honestly wouldn't it be great if we even, maybe you don't want to do it long term, but if we could have someone with that same kind of energy and drive. So maybe you'll inspire someone if maybe you don't get... Do totally. more of it yourself I mean, in time yeah, to come. I'm, I, you know, it's just, it's great to do it. It's great to tell people what's out there. It is a lot of work or it can be. That's what I was going to say. When you had the blog at its fullest, like what was a regular week like? Did you um, have to go to loads of things or were you asked to lots of things? Or did I you? used to do a lot more than I do now. Mm. Uh, I used to go to the opening of an envelope. I'm <laughs> getting older now. And really, since COVID, I suppose... I've changed a bit. I'm not as comfortable going out, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did start Sligo Hub, which is another website. Mm. I started that um, myself and Kate McCarthy from Grange or Cliffany. We started that, and really, when we were running Sligo Hub, that was extremely hectic. Uh, when COVID hit, everybody was scared, mm. and nobody knew what was open or what was on. Yeah, so yeah. we spent, uh, it was long, long days having a list of exactly where you could get a takeaway, where you could yeah. get your shopping, who would deliver from the chemist. Kate did a map, I wrote the content. That was extremely And again, to remind people work. watching, like, that may see it, I think a lot of people probably thought, 
Magnum Lady or Sligo Hub. Oh, that's funded or it's yeah, linked no, to something. We it's not. We, like we I know weren't. you had a little business through Hub that people could sponsor, but yes, it wasn't like we, we had you a were few doing sponsors that came on board, and we were extremely grateful to them. Um, but it was really just to pay for the domain name. It yeah, didn't yeah. pay us. No, but I mean um, that work you did in that in that yes, lockdown. Yeah, it was, it was a yeah, serious effort. It was a lot of work, and uh, yeah, people did think uh, Sligo Hub was uh, Sligo Tourism, and it's not. I moved away from it now purely. I suppose there wasn't enough hours in the day yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Sligo Hub is still running, but I keep my Magnum Lady blog. You do. It. That's the one. That's yes. where we find your regular updates. Yes, yeah. Uh, like on your blog journey, let's say like in Sligo, well, anywhere I suppose, where was your favourite place that you visited? Like what, was the, what um, would you say? Well, let's go Sligo first. It's like picking a favourite child, isn't I know, it? Yeah, um, exactly. We want to have I the think, others. <laughs> I think... There's two places really for me, uh, Glenif Horseshoe. It's mm. just, there's a different atmosphere up there. I can't explain it. Yeah. Uh, I, even I was up there the week before last and just the minute I start driving up there, it's like another world. Yeah. And then when you park the car, it's just, I don't know, I just can't explain it. Yeah, and it's I only just, went there for the first time a couple of years ago myself. And yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. Yes. You feel like you're not in, in this world anymore. It's, no. just, it's just surreal and the scenery is insane. Yes, like. it's it's fabulous. And I suppose having the photo that I took there that went a bit viral, nice that helped. Um, another place is Loch Eski. People wouldn't okay. think of that. But the drive around there. Mm. So you start driving, I suppose, on Loch Tout, Tubacurry Road, and you would drive towards Loch Would that be near the Ox Mountain Adventure? Yes. I did drive that I, road I've and I remember been, impressed I've on been, it. I've been uh, there amazing. too. There'd be, there's chickens and sheep and yeah, they're yeah. all over the place. You know, you wouldn't want to meet another car coming the other no, way. No, I know? did think that too. And you're like, mm. <laughs> uh, But yeah, and the Ladies Bray as well. Um, okay. That's close to me. But even like where I live, there's dinosaurs where I live. I bet not, but not many no, people. Dinosaurs no, dinosaurs in yeah, Sligo. There's two dinosaurs oh, in Where Kulani. is that now? Or? In Kulani. Kulani. Yeah, yeah, that's where I live. Uh, they're just up the road from me. You can see one from the road. They're not alive, obviously, I presume. No, no. <laughs> but it's great when it snows and, and, you know, I could just imagine yeah. people's faces. There's a dinosaur yeah, yeah, in a yeah. field. Just randomly. It's not just part randomly. of an event? or no. a, Just a field? No, okay. just well a, a man <laughs> made them and they're there and I'd love them. I'd like we could, why not have a dinosaur park? Mm. Well, uh, something different. Yeah. There you go. It started here on the slide there show. There you go. <laughs> Val's Dinosaur Park. <laughs> uh, so... Out of places in Ireland you've never been that you'd love to go, where would you? There go? are so many places. Mm. Um, I haven't seen half enough of Ireland. Uh, and I suppose it's a time thing and a money thing. Yeah. Um, when I was doing, I had an exhibition in the Hawkeswell, which was where the, the Wild Atlantic Way uh, middle-aged adventurer thing came aboard. And there was an idea in the back of my head that I was going to get an ice cream van. Or, mm. I'm a bit, yeah. Uh, or tour Ireland from different forms of transport, so okay. like a skateboard and a Honda 50, yeah, yeah. And, and just stop at different places and chat to people, yeah. like the characters. I, I know, I, th I think Tommy Turner did a great walking thing years ago on the yes. telly, and it just gives you a different kind of a journey when you're walking. Totally, you because it. you will meet these characters, yeah. and, and you're not expecting to meet them, and you'll just stumble upon them, and they're just normal people. So, so you'd like that kind of a I journey, rather than like, that. I want to go to this. No, no. it's not yeah. really, it's never about the... The destination, the destination it's always the journey yeah. because you don't know what you're going to meet along the way yeah, and that's yeah. like life really yeah you know? it's true true yeah. uh, so i just love i'm a bit quirky a bit different and i'd love to do something different well i see with a smile me. on your face i can Sorry, see this yeah, might be something that might happen down the line uh, you know what I, mean? Are you? I, I keep coming back to it i do think it's a good i like a fire engine you know here we go i'm off on tangent <laughs> again this is what happens that's good we like <laughs> tangents but that's how the best ideas come about yes, isn't it? you keep throwing yeah. up crazy ideas and then something sticks yeah, yeah. and i think people nowadays want something different to, to read totally, and watch yeah. it. And okay, I mean, through your blogging journey, I'm sure lots of people have interacted with you in one way or another. Like, was there anyone particularly famous that interacted with you? Or I know you've been on multiple TV and radio shows and all that. Yeah, I was on, uh, I've been on RTE, uh, the Today Show, they gave mm -hmm. me a makeover. It didn't last, sadly. I'm back to looking <laughs> like a wreck. Um, I was all. on uh, TV3, I took a photo down in Hazelwood of Swan's um, like in a love heart yeah. and I got in a final of a photo competition didn't win but I was on the telly yeah, yeah. and then I was on the Claire Burns show a couple of years ago talking about panic attacks right okay so and then I suppose most recently Charlie Flanagan the TD, TD um, yeah. he gave I, you a plug for Fault Ireland I think he was did. It? so hopefully he, they wake he, up and he maybe he told me that uh, Fault Ireland should give me a job really yeah, so but you, uh, you were saying to me before that you actually wouldn't particularly want it now you're happy what you're doing I, but I think it might be good to have someone like you 
to maybe meet with Foral Ireland or meet with Saigo Tourism or someone to go, look at, here's all the things, like, even if you are hiring someone to do it, I can, here's the plan, I can lay it yeah, all out. Like, there's, there, there's a lot I'd love to do. And I would, I suppose, years ago would have wanted to work in tourism. Mm. Um, I'm lucky now, I have my dream job. I have the best boss in the world and the best team go. that I work with. Um, so I'm happy out. Uh, but you know, but there are so many ideas, and sometimes I I would get a bit frustrated where I kind of think, you know. But anyway, no, no. I, but I think know. that is a creative person will have all these ideas, and you go, oh, I'd love to see them come to fruition. Yes. But sadly, maybe the funding isn't there, whether it's yourself or locally, or, or the yeah. energy to get it done isn't there as well. Yeah, I still you know, think so. you need a passion. It yeah, has yeah. to be a passion. But you definitely have a passion. Oh, that's I for know. sure. And we're only after this is our first half. Here. We're going to, yeah. to take a little break, so we've got loads of passion through there. That was great. So, I mean, we all know your your, your blog experience and your photography and the journey that you had there, but I know you're a huge uh, mental health advocate and it's very close to your heart. And like, I suppose, can you explain to us all a bit more why that is or what, how has it affected yourself? Yeah, I suppose a few years ago I got hit with depression out mm. of the blue and it could be an age thing, who knows. Um, and I didn't know where I was going really or what I was doing. So I started blogging about mental health, as yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, people say that I'm brave, but really I'm just honest. I, I think if I had a broken leg, I'd tell people I had a pain yeah. in my leg or whatever. So for me, it was no different. And I actually th found through blogging about it that people were contacting me then and giving me bits of advice. Yeah. And it was really helpful and it started a conversation. Uh, I know someone said to me, had I contacted Having a Laugh, the charity? Yes, we're blowing. And uh, I hadn't, and I didn't really know a lot. I, I knew they were there, but I didn't really know what they did. So I dropped an email and they were like, is there anything you'd like to do? And I didn't really know because I didn't have a lot of energy or anything. Mm. So I went along for a seaweed bath and, and for the first time in a while I took the camera with me and I walked along Strand Hill and I took some photos and then when I came out of the seaweed bath I happened to bump into Blaheen and okay. I just was like, I'm so grateful. Like that I think like yeah, I had the support of my family and I'm very grateful for that. But just to know somebody outside of that cared. And a complete stranger. Uh, yes, There's a real to lovely totally. warmness to that. Like, yeah. yeah, and that they what they do is they give vouchers for people that are in mental health therapy. Oh, I actually didn't even know yeah, that. Yeah, so, okay. and it's whatever you want to do. So yeah. say if you fancy surfing and you're in mental health therapy, you get referred and uh, you can go for a surf lesson. Wow. You, for me, it was a seaweed bath. I didn't have a lot of energy. And then I went for a photography lesson. Right, um, okay, that's so what I it, it's whatever stuff. you want to do. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's hugely important. And I suppose through the mental health journey, I had anxiety, had panic attacks, all kinds of things. I had a panic attack in a mindfulness yes, class. In, but in anyway. A class. Well, that, that's a first, I'm sure. Yeah, there you go. trust me. It was a, a good place to have but, one if you were uh, to have it, maybe. Well, yeah. <laughs> but way. anyway, uh, it was. I found I was trying to find things to fix me and I didn't know what was going to fix me and I, I would go from this to this to this. But there's a kind of new thing now as well, like having a laugh for there, they're fantastic, but there's also social prescribing and we're lucky in Sligo, there's a place in the Family Resource Centre. Is and on the mall, is it? Yeah, yeah. there's also Tubba Curry. Okay. So you go along and, and they'll ask you what you like to do and then they'll suggest things. So I think, especially with COVID, we've all lost maybe our ability to be social and, yeah. and we're all a bit anxious but if you if your gp can refer you or you can refer yourself if you feel you need right, it okay. and they'll find something again for you wow. um because i find sometimes people might go i'll go for a walk that's fine but okay. when you've got all these things going through your head um it's you know maybe that's not the thing for you yeah i mean do. so you can get some air but you need, yes. to go, I need something more engaging or maybe it's go out and do an activity totally. with other people more yes. so than I need and, to and it might be a social thing and through having a laugh um, I started the coffee mornings mm. um, that was because I found I didn't have anyone to go for coffee with um, yeah. and I you know I so I, I suggested we do a coffee morning and like we had the blind tiger were amazing thank you guys they gave us the place they they gave us the coffee for the first one and uh 200 people turned up what? and my anxiety was through the roof <laughs> and I'd picked it purely because you could see through the windows before you went in yes, because yes. I know when I was very very bad like I, I could I jumped the height of myself if someone even said hello to me so okay. I needed to see what was beyond a door mm. so the blind tiger was perfect there were two doors if people needed to leave yeah, very I, true, and yeah. it was that's why I picked the place and luckily they came on board 
And now four years on, the coffee mornings still happen. They've had to go online. Yeah, but they're right. still there and they're once a month, usually the first Monday of the month, and it's on the Having a Laugh so website. So if people want to find out about it, go to Having a Laugh on totally, Facebook or the website. Yeah, the and it's totally, it, it's just, you don't have to explain yourself. And yeah. if you're having a bad day, the majority of people that are there understand. Okay, they, you know, they, might, they might be having a good one, but they've had the bad day. And exactly, they can be exactly. And, and for me, I, I suppose the hope I want to give is that there is hope out there. Like yeah. I never thought I'd come back to me, but I'm back and I'm back even better because I've learned a lot about myself. Well, I think when you battle through a journey like that, you build up a bit more resilience and resolve yes. in yourself. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, you learn more about yourself. Totally. I mean, I can see even chat to you today, like, and I did meet you at times and I yes. knew you were, and I know you wouldn't have been yes. bubbly, but like, yes. it's lovely to see someone that's given so much to our region kind of, you know, when you had your tough time that it's now coming back. And I mean, if you believe in the universe and karma, yeah. I and mean, if there's ever someone that deserved a bit of oh, goodwill you. back, uh, it was you, like, you know. And, and like, so as you said, even through your blogging and all your work, you were having these difficult times that people wouldn't totally. have known from the outside. No, like. Well, you would if you'd have seen me back at the time. Okay. I mean, I used to run through town with my hood up. I just, I couldn't deal with people. I was yeah. scared of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a long road. And, and, you know, I mean, you have to go out. I had to. There was yeah, yeah, no yeah. not doing Part it. Of the game, yeah. But it, But you, and you feel like you're alone, but then you <coughs> find having a laugh and you find people and you realise you're not alone and that other people have been through it and are yeah. going through it. And it's okay to say that you're not okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of talk about it, but there's not a lot of people that actually put up their own experiences and I've written everything about no, mine. No, and that so, is true. Like so, you see yeah. these taglines and slogans and then the yes. person that maybe needs it most is going, oh, well, it, that's great. But like, where can I, what's the yes. real practical thing? And to, totally. to, to Blohin and even yourself highlighting it, like it actually, I'm sure as you said, loads of people have probably contacted you via the blog. They have. I've that, had this. That's great because I think you might say to someone, um, I'm not feeling great. And they might go, oh, you're grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I should get up and get out. And exactly. Get, and have, yeah. I sure it's, you know, and this this used to wreck my head where people would go, oh, just, you know, get up, show up and never give up. No, if you're having a bad day, go to bed, eat a cake. Do I think whatever that's it. you if want If it's a day you need that bad day, and thankfully I can't pretend I have experience, but I mean, I see and read things. And so totally. that's what you, and like, that's actually good normal advice from someone that's been there. Sometimes a family member might be having a bad day. You don't have to cry that they're having a bad day. No. You might just go, I'll bring you a cup of tea. Exactly. I'll leave you alone. That's all, <laughs> that's all you need. And I mean, my family were great. Andy would take one look at me and go, you need to have a, a nap. And yeah, I'd go, yeah, yeah I do. Good. I'd go ahead. And you didn't need someone fussing over and you. You just no, wanted space yeah, sometimes. Yeah, just have a break. And, yeah, yeah. and then I discovered art, actually. That's my thing now. Oh, well, so. we'll get to that in a minute. Cause <laughs> some of your artwork is beautiful. Oh, it's amazing what you've been getting up playing, to. Like. But yeah. Yeah, no, so, so I mean... You, when we spoke about you've, you've blogged about your mental health, you've, the coffee mornings, uh, even social prescribing. We'll definitely have to put some links to yeah, this afterwards. Yeah, totally, because I've only, I'm only new to this and it's through actually a work project that I'm working on and we're looking at the best practice across Europe for social prescribing. And it's just, um, that's how I discovered it. And I've, there's a, you can do social farming. There's a farm yeah. even in um, Bunnanadden, Quarryfield Farm. They've got alpacas. You right. can go and help them. Wow. You know, it's whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I know IT Sligo, have they a course? In yes, the first course in Ireland. And, it's and is that actually, for someone to kind of coach in it? Or is yeah, it, it's, sure. it's, it would teach you, I suppose, how to advise people about okay. social prescribing. Well. But yeah. And now we're going back to your blogging. Obviously, you had the two blogs at one stage. You now have the one, which is still going strong. Yeah. But apart from that, so you have the art. Yes. Okay. And what are the current projects? Because I know I've seen different things you've been doing. You've the art. That's just a, just a hobby again. But you've had. Have yeah. you ever put in a, the exhibition was photography? You were talking earlier. Have I ever, had two exhibitions. Well, I've had a, a couple of photography exhibitions. Then I had the window in the Weir Gallery uh, last yeah. month. Just a few photos in there. And then I had an exhibition in S SG Education. They're an art shop in Carrow Road. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant down there. And uh, that was to donate some money to Feral Cat Sligo. Yes. So basically, uh, all the art I've done so far, I've donated to, first was Leitrim Animal Welfare. The second was Wildlife West Rescue. And they named a fox after me. Oh, OK. And then, Did they call it Magnum Lady or Val? No, Val, <laughs> Val the Vixen. Oh, so, well, that, that um, yeah, so I actually got to release her. Back to the Wild, oh, uh, that nice was moment. just, I mean, fantastic. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, the last one was the Feral Cats. So 
I try because the art helps my head and basically I paint all the time. I'm drowning yeah. in paintings. So if anyone's looking for a painting and I donate um, quite a lot. Okay, so they can buy to, them off you yes, and then the money goes to... It, like most of the money, I try and keep a little bit... I was going to say, can you keep a little bit for yourself? <laughs> because what was happening was I was giving all the money and then Andy yeah, was yeah. like, but you have to buy your canvases and stuff. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah, 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 I do. Unless someone wants to sponsor the canvases. Anyone Shameless out there plug. with an art <laughs> shop in town? No, but why not? Why not? If you're doing yeah. something good and like, I'm, look at no more, no more than, I'm sure they'll get a little plug as well. Totally. I, I mean, like yeah. To I think a lot of us are afraid to ask for these things. Like, yeah, no, I'd, I'd love that because the, the painting helps my head so much. I give myself an hour a day and just get up and paint what is ever in my head. And then if I can donate some money, because animals are hugely important to me. Yeah, yeah. What's um, the little dog again? I have two dogs. Yes. I have Pugly and Rocket. Rocket, yes, I yeah, think so they feature quite strongly a lot in social media. Yeah, then they've been, both of them have been poorly, they're getting oh. older, so uh, they don't feature as much, as much but they're okay. still there. So, yeah, 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 still, yeah, still keeping you yeah. company. Um, and go back to uh, Sligo itself, okay? I mean, obviously you've promoted to death Sligo, like, and I often say, as I said everyone, I think it's one of the most best go-to blogs to Thank find you. out stuff, you know? Um, but do you think Sligo's been promoted Enough. And again, this isn't a loaded question to give out around this, just kind of to go, what do you think we could do more of to promote it better? Or? I'd love to see it promoted more. I have a million ideas, uh, like simple ideas, because I don't know if you know uh, that Queen may have got killed by a lump of cheese. <laughs> no, I did not know <laughs> so that. So I found that out actually in Rathcrohan, which is in Roscommon. They have a cave there, which is the gateway to hell and also the birthplace of Halloween. So oh, no. in where in Roscommon? Ross, in Rathcrohan Park. This was a, it's a community-based um, centre. You need to go there. Yeah. Everybody needs to go there. And they, they're on all these different, uh, they've, they're on a megalithic site, but they'll bring you down. There's this cave there. It's called the Cave of the Cats. Okay. You can go down into it, and it's called the Gateway to Hell. And it's said that this is where Halloween originated, originated. from. And there's a, there is a, a legend there or a story that a fellow was chasing a cow and it went down the cave and it came out of the caves of Kesh. Oh, so, right, okay. So there's all wow. these, so the anyway, that's there. there. But um, uh, on the tour, you see the video and the video tells you about the different legends. And Queen Maeve is one of them. And legend has it, her nephew killed her by firing a lump of cheese in a catapult and it killed her. So okay. why can't Sligo have a cheese festival? Yeah, why can't we roll cheese off Knocknaray or the or Mall? There's or, enough hills around. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I just think there's so much we could do and I'm buzzing with ideas okay, and so energy. I think we're definitely getting an energy here that whoever's yes. the strategic people in yes. the tourism world of, of Sligo that we need maybe just have a little brainstorm with you. And yeah. even, you'll give them the ideas for free, I would even say at this point. Totally. You're like, glad to see things. But even at one stage, I, I really wanted to do a bus tour of uh, the Yates, uh, different, the places where he wrote the poems. Yes. And wouldn't it be amazing if people were dressed in the costumes and could um, yeah. recite the poems in character. Well, I think we've so enough great theatre people around yes, as well. Yes, so you could start at Sligo Tourism. I did actually do a plan for this. It didn't end up going anywhere, but I had a little mini bus in my head. I would bring people from the tourist office around Dooney Rock, Isle of Innisfree, all of the places, and just, you know, give them the location for the poems. And oh. bring it to life. I know, and yeah, then, yeah. yeah. Also, I would love to do someone dressed as Yates going on the train. Yates on a train, like snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> and just Could recite, be a in there. recite the poetry and even give out some of the Sligo food that we're famous True. for. Yeah, yeah. And just tell people all that we have to offer. There's yeah. a million ideas. A million ideas. So, you know, as I said, that was a very good positive answer because it's great to kind of go, well, here, give out. No, here's uh, some ideas no. I think we could do. There's in. too much negativity. No, very true. And yeah. and I find that, especially with social media. Um, the next question the, is, yes. what frustrates you about Sligo? Yes. But I mean, uh, yes. just I suppose that kind of answers it. Yes. There is a bit of it around. And I yeah. Um, and and the the big issue is, and especially if you've, well, for anybody maybe, but especially with the mental health things, you're going to focus on the negative. Yeah, uh, yeah, you true. could get a hundred positive comments, but you're going to focus on the one, ah, who does she think she is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, She's and got notions. And, and people can say, I don't mind it. Like, it's not easy to not mind it. Like, no, it, it exactly. It takes a real strength of character Ex to go, I don't care. Exactly. I think you hit a point in life where you actually don't care. Yeah, I'm, know I'm waiting too quick. to get there. <laughs> um, yeah, especially, yeah, recently someone had a bit of a dig. And then and then you're like, mm, you know, the blog really is a personal blog. And, and I try to recommend as many things as I yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. But it's from my point of view. Obviously, I haven't done everything. Yeah, but that is the thing. And I mentioned earlier, I think, 
I, I liked having you on the show because I think a lot of people maybe don't understand that no. it is a complete hobby. Yes. Magnum Ladybug is a complete totally. hobby. You know, you might get a free cup of coffee here and there, fair enough. Yeah, occasionally. Well deserved. Occasionally. Well deserved. If anyone very... wants to give her more holidays or trips <laughs> away or give her a car for a while or whatever, you know what I mean? Why not? Because I don't know many other people in town that write as extensively as you do. So I think we should be, you know, connecting more with you where we can. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think we need to get people I to wake love, up a little I bit more. I love it, really, yeah. And uh, I love asking this question to people. I got, I got enough what you're going to come up with now. But if I gave you a million euro, you had to spend it on Sligo. Mm-hmm. What would you think you'd spend it on? Oh, that's a really tough one. I would love there to be a creative centre. Mm. I've been to other countries where they have, like, I think there's the old Coleman's Mustard Factory, and it's now a centre for creative people. Yeah. Sligo has a wealth of creativity. Mm, yeah. So imagine having one centre where there were the musicians, the artists, the All writers, that people could come and maybe learn from them and do yeah. a course. Um, and also I find if, if you have creative people together, they're going to spark ideas off each other. No question about And it. who knows where it would yeah. end up. Um, I, I'd love to see the bowling alley back. We used to have it years yeah. ago. I think it would be fantastic. There's so many different things that could be done. Yeah. You know, and, and things that maybe wouldn't cost a lot of money, but just maybe a bit of thought. We have the old bachelor's factory down there, don't exactly. we? Exactly. And that's little... amazing. Actually, that would be an amazing film, yeah, like yeah. a movie set or something. Yeah, yeah, no, it is amazing. But, it, but as a creative hub, it wouldn't be lovely to... Yes, yeah, no, um, no, so. because there's so many creative people. And, and, like, you don't make an awful lot of money out of anything creative, or the majority of people don't. No, so imagine having a them hub that would support them. Support them and develop, and there's the young talent in this country. Totally, so, yeah. yeah. And, Hopefully, and we'll, through, maybe we might not have to give you a million euro, but we might start annoying people and see if we get yeah, something moving I'd on. love to see that, just, yeah. And, and yeah, there's so many different things. And again, maybe just one place where people could find out about everything, maybe. Well, I think, uh, from chatting to you, the first place they should go to is Magnum Ladies Blog. And I'm not, being, a dis- I'm not being like just twee and oh, plug, 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 plug. It is a voluntary website. It is packed with stuff whether you're a teenager a mammy uh you know older person whether you're a family with kids it's bursting with stuff and it promotes our lovely county and beyond in fairness you know it's commonly to me more yes so uh, i think that's where people should first go to look for Thank some you. creative fun ideas how to do and i've learned so much even having a laugh we must actually get blowing on yeah time. too and she is a cinema outdoor cinema thing coming soon that I think was, it was postponed. Meant, wasn't yeah it? it was postponed so, because of the weather so that's yeah. coming up and do support it because all the money goes back to give yeah. the vouchers to people yeah and that's and amazing i actually genuinely didn't know that. yeah that so it's just yeah whatever you're interested in you know yeah. it could be anything and the, the website's great and they're just so supportive mm. and and I'm blessed that I met them and you know mm. Blohin, Teresa and Trisha we bought a book out last year this I was another idea. I remember somehow I do remember that um, part. Yeah and it's actually a year since we bought it out and the, the reason for that was it came up at one of the coffee mornings we were yeah. telling stories and, and out of mental health sometimes stories do come up the, yeah. the you know funny stories so the book is light hearted and uh, it's, that's out for sale. Lieber have it for sale and you can oh, yeah. buy it on the website I have it too. At home. Lovely famous and picture of the donkey you took yes, in the front. Yes, that's right. There's and a very good poem in that as well, I believe. Yeah, the, <laughs> yes. They're, they're, yeah, of course, you're in it yourself. No, but it was fun. It was like, I never yeah. be. So I think there's loads of people did that with little photos, stories. Absolutely. So it nice and it's outlet. very, it's light hearted and it's a book. It was done primarily because when you're in the throes of mental health, you don't really want to be concentrating on a long book. This one you yeah, can yeah. dip in and out True. of. Um, any page you open it will give you a smile and the majority of people that have written in it have had their own battles yeah, and, issues, yeah. and they're able to to it's you know good. it's 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 a lovely book no it really is it really is you yeah. said it's just that you know you know up on the shelf and we're having a coffee and yes, dipping it out no, absolutely and we're very proud of it so. and we're very proud of you and i'm so glad we had you on the show i love to, people to hear more of your background and story and what you've done uh, from my point of view as a person living in Sligo thank you for all you've done I think you've really opened up what Sligo is and I think Sligo's tourism has got much more busier and there's a greater awareness and I do believe that probably a big part of that was the nucleus of you for those number of years because no one else was really writing as intensely as you were so I think you have to be able to take a lot of credit for what you've done so, thank so you. well no, done I'm not at all <laughs> well I think sometimes people deserve a bit of praise and a bit of credit so well done and uh, I've been privileged to get to know you over the years and work with you on different little pieces and that so so Magnum Lady Dot com. Com. Magnumlady.com yeah, is where I'm, you can I'm find on TikTok from. and I'm on Twitter. Oh, TikTok and all. Oh, oh there we TikTok, go. All right, yes, okay. I put up the Red Bus and the Ox Mountains and it's got 150,000 views. Wow. Just Brilliant. a quick, I, I don't know what I'm doing. But well, it's obviously I working. Only, I was only playing. So yeah. yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. Great. So. Well, look, 
We'll, we'll no doubt see you around. Maybe in a year we'll have you back on the show when this Creative Hub is alive and well. Yeah, Who knows? We'll, we'll all give it all that. Right. Thanks, well, Thank you so much for your time and say hi to all the family at home. Thanks, Brendan. So if you liked what you've just seen, don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel here. We've loads of great interviews from a load of really interesting people over the series. And if you're on social media, which I'm sure loads of you are, we are on Instagram and Facebook, so give us a follow there.